What is up, America? Greetings and welcome, friends, to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and to your well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 26 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema and rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may say that's a miracle, this renewing and healing system is really just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 855-660-4261. If you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have questions about the longevity products, about formulations, skincare questions, if you want to share a success story or if you simply want to contribute to the conversation, we welcome your calls at 855-660-4261. Get on board early. It's first come First serve at 855-660-4261. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear us talk about here on the Bright Side, head over to brightsideben.com. Take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products, including my personal favorite, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine Multivitamin Mineral Complex Powder that you add to water and drink. It's a wonderful way to get your nutrients in a liquid format. Great if you have digestive issues. Great for older folks. Great for kids. Loaded with nutrients like the B-complex and vitamin C and zinc and selenium and copper and chromium and potassium. Truly a cornucopia of nutrients. Just 50 bucks a canister. Most folks will notice results in one or two doses beyond Tangy Tangerine. You can find out all about it and all the longevity products that you hear advertised on the program at brightsideben.com. You can also... Give the Brightside Ben phone team a call at 866 735 2470. 866 735 2470. Or you can click the Join the Team link on the upper left hand corner of the page of brightsideben.com and start yourself a longevity business. Make some money selling longevity products or just get your products at the wholesale price. That's brightsideben.com. Click on the Join the Team link on the upper left hand corner of the page. Or you can call the folks at the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. Okay, once again, thank you so much for joining us on The Bright Side. We've been talking about stress management and the hormones of stress, the chemistry of stress, serotonin being a stress management hormone, melatonin a rest and relaxation hormone. The body grows and heals and regenerates itself in the rest and relaxation mode. There's two great movements in the body, the movement towards stress and breakdown and the movement towards rest and relaxation and build up. Melatonin is one of the hormones that regulates the build up process, the repair process, the relaxation process, the nighttime process. Serotonin, on the other hand, regulates inflammation, immunity, itching, and a generalized stress response, including pigmentation, darkening. We've been talking about the relationship between the chemistry of stress and the chemistry of pigmentation, darkening, estrogen, cortisol, serotonin. All of these are big-time stress management hormones, emergency-type hormones, and they all are involved with the initiation of pigmentation. There's like an epidemic of hyperpigmentation. I'm in the, the world of skincare almost uh, eight to ten hours every day working with patients, working with formulas, working with dermatologists and physicians. And let me tell you something, most women understand this, it seems like everybody is hyperpigmenting. Melasma is ubiquitous. Hyperpigmentation is all over the place. Dark spots are appearing and many people don't know why. Well, I'm telling you why. 
pigmentation is one of the classic signs of a stress response run amok. If you're one of those folks who's hyperpigmenting, there's a really good chance that your serotonin, melatonin balance is off. If you're self-medicating to try to up your serotonin levels by eating lots of sugar, and you're also hyperpigmenting, I would say there's a good chance that you're burning through serotonin and your body is dealing with some kind of chronic stressor mediated by estrogen, serotonin, and cortisol, but usually caused by some kind of food, some dietary issue, prescription drugs, emotional problems, mental problems, or some combination thereof. If you're one of those folks that's hyperpigmented, if you're getting lots of dark spots, you may want to consider using melatonin, whose name, after all, means controlling pigment. Mela for pigment, tonin for controlling. Melatonin is a pigment controlling hormone. In addition to having relaxation properties and building properties, melatonin can help you build bone. Melatonin can help you repair your skin. Melatonin is involved in the secretion and production of the body's most important and protein collagen. In addition to melatonin, you may want to take other soothing nutrients, anti-stress nutrients, especially the B-complex, especially niacin, which, by the way, has topical skin lightening properties as well. You can crush up a niacin pill or a B-complex pill and put it in a cream. It makes a great anti-pigmentation topical, uh, topical ingredient. Niacin's got wonderful skincare properties for helping deal, uh, folks deal with acne also. Nice and super duper important. It's also important for the brain. It's important for serotonin production. Omega-3 fatty acids are relaxing. They may help you if you're dealing with hyperpigmentation. Magnesium, GABA, theanine, lithium orotate. These are all wonderful anti-anxiety, anti-stress nutrients that may help you with skin skin pigment issues. These skin pigment issues, this hyperpigmentation is intimately connected to the adrenal glands, these two little lumps of tissue that sit on top of our kidneys. And these adrenal glands are responsible for the stress response or for controlling or mediating the stress response. And the adrenal glands are where many of these troublemaking hormones, these skin darkening pigmentation hormones are produced. Estrogen, for example, is an adrenal hormone. Cortisol is a classic adrenal hormone. When we're cranking out these adrenal hormones because our biochemistry is messed up because we've eaten the wrong foods or we're under digestive stress or we've got blood sugar issues, we're on that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, not to mention psychological factors and mental factors, all of these can can conspire to cause adrenal stress, activation of the adrenal glands, long-term activation of the adrenal glands. Eventually, we're going to be experiencing some of the signs of long-term chronic activation of the adrenal glands, long-term chronic activation of adrenal stress. Remember, the adrenal glands, just like the brain, are uh, have a window to the outside world via the skin. Yesterday we talked about how the skin is like a periscope for the brain to be able to sense the outside world. Well, much in the same way, the skin is a uh, the skin is a periscope for the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands can sense the outside world. The adrenal glands, the brain, the skin, and the digestive tract all work together. It's one of the most important ideas in all of health and wellness. The adrenal glands, the body stress system, the brain. The skin and the digestive tract are all integrated systems. And adrenal activity or adrenal stress will show up on your skin. Hyperactivity of the adrenal glands will show up, on, uh, show up in the digestive system. It will shut down the digestive system. Hyperactivation of the adrenal glands will shrink parts of the brain, the intellectual centers of the brain, the learning center, centers of the brain will shrink under long-term adrenal stress conditions. And the reptilian brain, the survival brain, the fight or flight brain will enlarge as we have long-term adrenal activation. So the skin is integrated with this global stress response in the body. The skin is integrated with adrenal gland, with the adrenal glands, with the brain, also with the digestive system, and the skin is a source of solar activated building chemicals. This is one of the most important reasons why you want to be getting out in the sun on a regular basis, not burning, but making sure you're exposing as much of your skin as possible to the sun. Everybody knows about vitamin D, but most people don't realize that building chemistry is initiated by solar activity. 
This whole idea of working with the skin and how we work with the skin is so important because we are obsessed with the health and the appearance and the condition of our skin, but we really don't know a lot about, uh, as, a, as, as lay people anyway, we really don't know a lot about how the skin is put together. And we'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Our number is 855-660-4261. We're coming back at you with more good health information right after this. Don't. Back on the bright side, I am pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. Our number 855 660 4261. Have a couple lines open for you. Try to get on board early, folks. It's first come, first serve, and we try to get to a, as many calls as we can. I will get your calls here at the bottom of the hour. If you want to learn more about the longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com. Take a look at our shopping cart with all the longevity products, including the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Enzymes, the Z Radical. They're all up at brightsideben.com. You can also click on the Join the Team link on the upper left-hand corner of the page, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, so we're talking about pigmentation and the stress response in the skin. There's just so much misunderstanding about the skin and the Despite the fact that we spent hundreds of millions of dollars in this country alone, probably many billions of dollars around the world in skincare products, there's just this, seems to be this epidemic of misunderstanding about how to take care of our skin. I got a letter today from a gal uh, in Australia. I've, uh, Hi there, I've seen you on the Alex Jones Show. I'm a, uh, I have a question I'm quite desperate over for no known reason. I love that. For no known reason, a couple weeks ago, I started getting facial hair and quite a lot of it on my chin and cheeks and the top of my lips. It's embarrassing. I don't know what to do. I read online, spearmint is supposed to be good for it. This is the kind of stupidity I'm talking about. Not for this gal, but for people who actually have the cojones to sell spearmint to get rid of hair on somebody's face, the idiocy. I read online spearmint is supposed to be good for it, and I ordered some Swanson spearmint supplements, but I'm in Australia. It'll take weeks to get here. Don't waste your money, ma'am. This is a gal from Australia. Her name's Christina. She's 30 years old. She weighs 140 pounds, and she concludes her note saying, nothing in my diet or life has changed. It just started. Now, this is the kind of misunderstanding that is not only, not, not only an epidemic, not only all over, but it's manipulated and, and preyed upon by people selling products. This is so unfair. If you're selling a product and you don't know crap about biochemistry or the skin, you are ripping people off. I don't know how you live with yourself out there if you're selling a skincare product and you don't know crap about the skin and you're telling people to put spearmint on their skin to get rid of their hair. If you've got uh, body hair, if you have anything going on in your skin or anything going on in your body, there is a reason for it. Nothing just happens. In the case of hair that appears on the skin, on the face, it's not uncommon. It's usually related to two major hormones. One is insulin insulin and the other is testosterone and together these these two uh, elevations and these two hormones form the basis of a health crisis called polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS and the classic sign of PCOS Christina and anybody listening is hair facial hair hair on the mustache also sometimes body hair also sometimes thinning hair on the head and certainly hyperpigmentation goes along with it the reason why we are so frustrated and so manipulated by people selling us skincare products and so frustrated by what appears on our skin is because we don't understand what the skin really is. We look at our skin, if you look at your skin right now, it just doesn't look like anything. But really, this thing that we call the skin is one of the most incredible organs in all of biochemistry, not just in the body, not just in the human body, but in all of animal biology. The skin is perhaps the most incredible so-called organ. The skin is, even though it doesn't look like anything's happening, the skin is a throbbing, seething, dynamic system, constantly moving, constantly changing, and even though it looks inert, it is far, far, far from inert. And you can think of the skin like a, a, a multi-layered structure. It's like a, a candy bar where uh, you have a, a piece of chocolate and then you have uh, icing on top of the chocolate and then you have sprinkles on top of the icing. Okay? It's got three parts. You got a piece of chocolate, which makes up maybe 90% of your skin. You've got icing on top of your skin, which maybe makes up 9 to 10% of your skin. And then on the order of 1% of your skin is sprinkles on top of the icing. Except in skin, obviously, we don't, we don't call it chocolate and icing and sprinkles. We call it the dermis, the epidermis, and the stratum corneum. So the skin is a multi-layered structure. The whole skin itself is maybe about as thick as a piece of paper. This layer, uh, the surface of the layer, uh, the surface of the skin, I should say, is called the hard layer. 
or in Latin it's called the stratum corneum. This thin slice of tissue is made up of hard cells similar in consistency to your fingernails. It's called keratin and this hard layer which is made up of keratin called the stratum corneum serves a protective function. The stratum corneum cells which are very similar in texture to your fingernails or maybe deer antlers or horse hooves or rhinoceros horns. This keratin based thin layer, the stratum corneum, serves a protective function and in between these cells of the stratum corneum, these hard cells of the stratum corneum, you have grout or putty. The grout or the putty is a fatty layer. Or it's, it's, it's kind of like an oily material, a fatty material. So you have on the surface of the skin hard cells, and then between those hard cells you have a fatty material you can think of like grout. If we take our raisin bread analogy, we've always said that the body is composed of raisin bread, where cells are the raisins and the matrix is the bread. The hard fingernails on your stratum corneum, the rhino horn, horse hoof, deer antler-like cells would be like the raisins, and the fatty grout-like substance would be the bread. The hard cells, these rhinoceros horns, fingernail-like cells sit in a fatty-like substance the way raisins sit in bread, in raisin bread. And that's the very surface of the skin. And it's about one-tenth as thick as a piece of paper. That's pretty darn thin. Now, underneath this hard layer, you have the remainder of the surface of the skin, the icing on our chocolate icing sprinkle analogy. The icing of the skin is called the epidermis. The epidermis sits under the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is the sprinkles, and the epidermis is like the icing. So underneath the icing, you have the, underneath the sprinkles, I should say, you have the icing, and this is called the epidermis. And it's altogether maybe as thick as a piece of paper. So your epidermis is about as thick as a piece of paper. Your stratum corneum, the icing on top of the epidermis, is about as thick as maybe a tenth of a piece of paper. You got your stratum corneum in your epidermis. And in addition to skin cells, the epidermis is the home of pigment cells. This is where pigmentation is largely occurring in this middle portion underneath the hard layer. And you have immune cells, you've got pressure cells that are responsible for sensations of touch. All of this is occurring in this middle layer, the epidermis layer. And this is also where the cells of the stratum corneum are born. Cells are born in the epidermis. These hard cells are born in the epidermis, and they kind of rise up to the top. And at the very end of their life, they form this sprinkle layer, the stratum corneum layer. The epidermis, by the way, is where skin cancer appears. Basal cell skin cancer and squamous cell, the two main skin cancers, appear in the bottom layers of the epidermis. As the skin cells are rising, this is where they become most vulnerable to things that cause cells to go crazy and cause cancer, either the sun or, or biochemistry. So you got your epidermis and you got your stratum corneum. The epidermis is also where psoriasis shows up. It's where eczema shows up. It's where acne shows up. And activation of the immune system in this lower layer can be related to problems with the digestive system. The digestive connection to the skin is based in largely this epidermal layer. Epidermal immune cells are what account to a large degree for local reactions that you have to different kinds of products, itching, rashing, dermatitis, but not necessarily the internal reactions. The internal reactions happen a little bit lower. So the epidermis is made up of multi-layers itself. You've got your very, very tippy top, the stratum corneum, and then underneath you've got different distinct layers. All of these are considered part of the epidermis. The thing about the epidermis is there's no blood in the epidermis. It's blood free. That means when you apply something to your skin, for the most part, it isn't going to get much past the skin. In order for something to get into the body by topically applying it, it's got to get into the blood, and there's no blood in the stratum corneum, and there's no blood in the epidermis. All the blood is located deeper in the real active layers of the skin. And this is where all of the collagen and the, uh, the connective tissue protein, all the stuff that we want to approach in our skincare products are located in this very, very bottom layer, the chocolate bar part of the skin, what I'm calling the dermis. All right, we're coming back. I forgot to tell Christina what to do about her PCOS. If you're dealing with hair on the uh, face, facial hair, 
uh, if your hair is thinning on the top of your head, if you have hair in the back, if this is all if you're a woman, uh, and you have facial hair, your hair is thinning on the top of your head, if you notice that you're gaining weight dramatically, if your skin is oily and you're breaking out, if you have problems with your periods, cramping, PMS, bloating, fibroids, fibrocystic breasts, all of these can be indicators of what we're calling PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, like many skin issues, or like many uh, biochemical problems, has a skin manifestation. One of the ways it shows up is as skin problems, but it's not per se a skin problem. It's not a skin issue. Your skin distress is a symptom of the biochemical breakdown that's based in insulin, estrogen, and maybe the male hormone testosterone. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, begins, as the name implies, with cysts in the ovaries. These cysts are little pieces of ovarian tissue that grow or hypergrow in response to the hormone insulin. PCOS is a pre-diabetic condition. So Christina or anybody else dealing with bi- hair on the face, thinning hair, in combination with problem periods, in combination with breakouts on the skin, you're more than likely dealing with pre-diabetes. More than likely you're dealing with blood sugar issues. These lead to cysts that grow in the ovaries, cysts produce male hormone and female hormone. Thus you end up problems with extreme manifestation of female symptoms. An extreme uh, weight gain, for example, problems with your periods, and extreme manifestations of male hormone symptoms because ovarian tissue makes both male hormone and female hormone, and that's what PCOS is. It's a, 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 a syndrome that manifests itself as extreme feminine hormone, uh, ex, uh, some of the signs of extreme secretion of estrogen, feminine hormones, and extreme secretion of testosterone, male hormones. So the way you deal with PCOS, first and foremost, is you treat it as a blood sugar issue. Get on the blood sugar control diet. That means restricting processed foods, sugars, wheat, grain, cereals, flours, all the fruit juices, fruits, all the foods that spike your blood sugar and make your insulin go nuts. That's the most important thing to do if you're dealing with uh, facial hair, thinning hair on the head if you're a woman, uh, and uh, uh, cysts and PMS and all those signs of PCOS. Number one. Deal with uh, your insulin issues, your blood sugar issues. Treat it as pre-diabetes. Get off of the insulin-spiking foods and get yourself on the sweeties from longevity and chromium and vanadium and magnesium and the B-complex and arginine and taurine and omega-3 fatty acids and uh, and inositol and all of the wonderful nutrients that we talk about on this program for helping stabilize blood sugar. The second thing you're going to want to do is work with your estrogen, and the best way to do that is to get yourself on some progesterone cream. You may want to start using uh, uh, magnesium, which can help with estrogen. You may want to also start using uh, the B-complex, which is very important for estrogen as well. And then third, and um, uh, not not most importantly, but not least importantly either, is the mineral zinc, which is very uh, important for connecting up testosterone to super testosterone. Zinc is also important for sugar metabolism. Uh, This super testosterone known as DHT is responsible for a lot of the the signs of uh, uh, hyper maleness, uh, uh, hair loss, or hair that's appearing on the face, 50 milligrams grams of zinc picolinate a day. So for PCOS, for hair that's appearing on your face, so supposedly uh, getting worse by the day, as Christina says, and nothing in her diet has changed supposedly, spearmint isn't going to help you. But zinc will help you. Essential fatty acids will help you. A a blood sugar controlled diet, eliminating processed foods and fruit juices and fruits and sweets and candies and cakes, uh, as well as taking uh, sugar metabolizing nutrients like chromium and vanadium and the B-complex and niacin and and, uh, and uh, uh, magnesium and taurine and all the other sugar-controlling nutrients can indeed help you. Thank you so much for your letter, Christina. Appreciate it. Okay, so so much I want to talk about with the skin. The take-home message, and we'll continue talking about the bottom layer of the skin on our next program. The bottom layer, the dermis, is really where most of the action is. The 90% of your skin is located in this bottom area. Uh, For now, the take-home message is the skin is made up of three layers. The surface layer is hard, dead cells that serve a protective function. These hard, dead cells sit in a matrix of fat. And the combination of of hard cells and fat form what is known as the stratum corneum, which you can think of as sprinkles on top of icing, on top of a chocolate, a piece of chocolate. The sprinkles are the stratum corneum, which are the hard cells in this fatty layer. Underneath that, you have the epidermis, which itself is multi-layered. That is like the icing that sits on top of the chocolate bar and under the sprinkles. 
This epidermal layer is the home of pigment cells. It's the home of immune cells. But there is no blood in this epidermal layer. In order to get to the blood, you've got to get to the chocolate. The 90% of our hypothetical candy bar, which in the skin is referred to as the dermis, this is where all the action in the skin really, really is, aside from the cells, that is, aside from the skin cells, all of the action, the blood supply, the collagen, the, uh, the moisture factors, many of the moisture factors anyway, the spongy factors that keep our skin nice and bouncy and soft. If you look at your, look at your little kid's skin, if you look at a baby's skin, you'll see that it's got sort of a, tur uh, a, 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 a kind of a mushy, soft, bouncy texture. It's got a lot of body to it. If you look at an old person's skin, there isn't so much body to it. The difference between an old person's skin and a young person's skin, that kind of squishy body texture that the skin has, the difference is in the dermis. It's not in the icing. It's not in the sprinkles. It's in the chocolate bar. It's in the dermis. It's not in the epidermis or the stratum corneum for the most part. A little bit of difference, but most of the difference between young, healthy, strong, thick, beautiful skin and a, a, a thinning, crepey, old person's skin is in this bottom layer that forms 90% of the skin. It's called the dermis. And here's the most important thing about the dermis, and we'll continue talking about this on our next Bright Side episode. The most important thing about the dermis is very few skincare products or skincare ingredients can work at the dermal level. The vast majority of the multi millions of dollars that we spend on skincare products, the hundreds of millions of dollars that we skin, spend on skincare products, uh, the bulk of the ingredients that we're purchasing in these products work at the sprinkle level, the stratum corneum level, or maybe the icing level, the epidermal level. Very few skincare ingredients can work at the dermis, this chocolate bar level at the bottom, yet this is where we really want to be. Now there are two wonderful ingredients that indeed have been scientifically shown in, in voluminous literature to work at this dermis level, at this bottom layer where all of the action is in terms of keeping your skin strong and vital and healthy, or the large majority anyway, of the action is. And there's two ingredients that can address dermal health, chocolate bar health in our chocolate bar analogy. There's two ingredients. I'll tell you what those are on our next Bright Side episode as we continue talking about the stress response and the skin and pigmentation and serotonin, ways to get off of SSRIs. Uh, we'll continue doing that on our next Bright Side episode. Time to hit the phones. 855-660-4261. Let's go across the pond and say hi to Peter in the UK. Peter, what is up, my friend? Hello, Ben. How are you? Greetings. You're the guy I was communicating with this morning, correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Peter wrote, uh, for the listeners, Peter put together an awesome website. I'll let Peter tell you about it. I'm very, very thankful, Peter. Thank you so much. Why don't you tell the listeners about the website, and then if you have any questions, I'll be glad to help you out. Okay, well, I've been a long-time listener, and I've been writing down descriptions for my own personal reference, and I thought your listeners could benefit from it as well, so I decided to make a website and put up all the descriptions. You are the man, Peter. You're my hero. What's the, tell uh, the listeners what the website is. Uh, it's benfuchsarchive.com. That's oh, benfuchsarchive.com. Cool. Benfuchsarchive.com, and I checked it out this morning, and it's, Peter, awesome, awesome work. Are you in the computer business, or are you just, it's your hobby, or? Uh, yeah, you know? I can make websites pretty easy. So, yeah. Very nice. Hang tight, Peter. Got to take a break. We'll get. To, we'll finish up your call when you come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 855-660-4261 is our number. We're coming back at you right after this. All right. We're talking to Peter in the UK. Peter, are you there, my friend? Yes, sir. All right. So BenFuchsArchive.com, correct? That's right. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Peter. And uh, did you have any questions? Can we help you out today? Uh, not really. I think I'll let you get to the other callers as your time is precious, Ben. Uh, Peter, I appreciate this so much. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll stay and in contact. I appreciate that. Yes, yeah, shoot me an email uh, whenever you have questions or any, anything I can do to help. And thank you again for putting that together. Well, BenFuchsArchive.com. Good work, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Bye. Okay. God bless, bro. Okay. Uh, moving on. Next phone call. John, help me out here. Where's my phone calls? Julia in Pennsylvania. What's going on? Hi, Ben. Hi, Julia. Um, I have a customer who's pregnant, and she has the group... B strep. Okay. And she's concerned about how she can get her flora healthy again after dealing with that. Probiotics, her, like probiotics, they, like they're going out of style. Did she take any? Uh, has she been on antibiotics at all? Um, they, they say they do not recently, but they say they do that right when the baby's born. And 
Well, make sure she's loaded up with probiotics and fermented foods. Anything she can do, and this is true for all pregnant women, anything a pregnant woman can do to support her digestive health is going to help the baby's, the, the entire baby's development, but also the baby's digestive system too. And this is true not only when a, a woman is developing a baby in the womb, but when a woman is breastfeeding, anything she can do to help protect her digestive wellness, including uh, and especially probiotics, is going to help her breast milk and help her baby develop uh, the development of the baby's digestive track too. So uh, um, first thing first thing yeah. I would be doing is probiotics and lots of them as well as fermented foods. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm still new to some of the products, so what's the best probiotic? That D- the Nightly Essence is a supreme, in fact, the Nightly Essence is not only the best probiotic that Longevity has, it may be the one of the best at least probiotic supplements that are, that's out there. Uh, and in fact, it may be one of the best Longevity products of the whole 400 plus product line that Longevity has. Uh, the, the Nightly Essence may be, along with the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, in my opinion, the best product. So it's called Nightly Essence. It's a little bit pricey, but it's wonderful. And if she's pregnant and she's dealing with um, a strep infection, that might be something she wants to do. The neat thing about the Nightly Essence is it has digestive enzymes in there along with the probiotics. So it's kind of a a nice, well-rounded digestive support supplement. Second thing that she wants to do is not put any foods into her system that suppress the immune system, and most especially that is processed food and sugar. Do you know 90% of the foods that Americans eat, 90% of the foods that we eat are processed foods. That means that 90% of the foods that we eat are foods that did not exist 100 years ago. That means 90% of the foods that we eat are foods that the body doesn't know what to do with. That means 90% of the foods that we eat are foods that suppress our wellness, suppress our health, and create digestive distress. Is it any wonder why we're seems like uh, we're falling apart at the seams in terms of our health? So you got to stay away from processed foods, especially processed sugars, processed flours, uh, foods that have excitotoxins in them, foods that have preservatives in them, uh, insecticides and pesticides. If we're if she's doing fruits and vegetables, have her make sure she's doing organic fruits and vegetables, or she's washing her fruits and vegetables really well. Uh, and then uh, and it, uh, she also wants to make sure that she's using nutrients that help her body process sugars and process uh, process processed food, especially the B complex, the entire B complex. Get her on the BTT, have her sip on that. The Z radical may uh, may be helpful. The healthy star pack in general would be a great idea, but especially, ma'am, the nightly essence, which is an unbelievably important, powerful, and effective digestive support supplement. Uh, and then she can also do fermented foods too. I don't like to. I don't want to sound like I'm always talking just about supplements. Food is very, very important. Uh, and uh, in terms of probiotic-based foods, sauerkraut, miso, tempeh, kefir, um, uh, pickles, apple cider vinegar, all of these can help with uh, digestive flora, with bacteria in the digestive tract. Anything else, ma'am? Um, well, and is there anything to do for the baby? Because the baby would be getting the antibiotic naturally, you know, when they're... The, the baby in the womb you're talking about, the, the well, fetus? Right. Apparently they give it to you, the uh, penicillin, right when the baby's being born to keep yeah. the baby. Breast milk. Breast milk is a baby's best antibiotic friend. Anything the mom, make sure the mom's breastfeeding, first of all. The mom wants to breastfeed as long as possible. Uh, and anything that the mom does to support her digestive system, including probiotics, including whey protein, omega 3 fatty acids, all of that's going to pass through the breast milk and help support the baby's uh, digestive health and wellness. That's really how nature has, has designed the system. We get born, human beings get born with immature digestive tracts and immature di- immune systems. We're born early, but that's not a problem because nature has set up a system where breast milk will accelerate the maturation of the digestive tract and of the immune system. It accelerates the development of the digestive tract and the immune system. So keeping the baby well-fed on breast milk and making sure that the mom is not intaking a, a factors that she's allergic to because that can get passed through the, to the baby through breast milk and making sure the mom is on a good nutritional supplement program, eating her fermented foods, getting her nightly essence probiotics, getting her beyond tangy tangerine nutrients, that will all go through to the breast milk and making sure, absolutely 100% sure, that she's getting omega-3 fatty acids with DHA and EPA, that is fish oil, which is very important for building the baby's brain and building the baby's visual acuity and building the uh, the baby's nervous system, both the central nervous system, the brain that is, and the peripheral nervous system, the nervous system that moves the the uh, the, uh, the arms and the legs and the periphery of the body. Uh, omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil especially. Does that help, Julia? Yes, I do have one more quick question. When yeah, you let me talking. say one last thing before you go on. Zinc is also very important. Mom should be on 50 milligrams of zinc. Zinc is critically, and iodine. 
iodine also. Zinc and iodine are two very important minerals for building a baby's brain, building a baby's, uh, all, of, all of the glands of the body as well. So 50 milligrams of zinc a day, 12 and a half milligrams of iodorol a day for moms who are breastfeeding. I'm sorry, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, that's great. Um, I also, when you were talking earlier about skin, I have a customer that has chronic canker sores. Okay. Uh, canker sores are a sign in any kind of viral infections, canker sores, herpes shingles, chicken pox, even any kind of viral infections that show up on the skins or on the skin is a sign that the immune system is not doing its work. This is really, really important. It's not a skin issue per se. It's an immune issue. It's a defensive issue. Immune system is the defense system and it's supposed to be able to handle viruses. You're not supposed to just get canker sores. Assuming this is a canker sore that's a virally based canker sore. Sometimes little cuts will appear, and those aren't necessarily immune system uh, reactions, but there's still problems with uh, nutrition. But in terms of canker sores, you're looking mostly at viral infections. A viral infection and a herpes cold sore is the same way. A viral infection is a sign that the immune system is suppressed and compromised. So for patients who are getting canker sores or cold sores, uh, you want to focus on immune building, immune system building. There's a couple ways to do that. Number one, you don't want the body to have anything it has to deal with uh, that puts a stress on the on the immune system, most especially sugar and processed food, once again, correct any digestive issues, and then make sure that your patient or your client is getting immune-building nutrients. Vitamin C may be the most important of the immune-building nutrients. I'd be using 5 to 10 grams a day of it, a, uh, a day of vitamin C in divided doses. You always want your vitamin C in small doses. Too much can cause a little bit of diarrhea. So uh, for canker sores, high doses of vitamin C. Make sure your uh, client is on 50 milligrams of zinc and on the ultimate Selenium, both of those are very, very important for the immune system. Selenium is powerfully antiviral in addition to being good just as a general immune tonic or having a, a general upregulating effect on the immune system. Selenium is specifically antiviral. Uh, 400 to 600 uh, micrograms of selenium use the ultimate selenium from longevity. 50 milligrams of zinc in addition to the vitamin C, very important for the immune system. Magnesium is important for the immune system. You'll get that, of course, in the OsteoFX. Just a general uh, nutritional supplement program like the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate Daily can also be good for the immune system. And last but not least, the Z Radical is becoming fast becoming one of my favorite longevity products, and that also is wonderful for immune system health. It has an ability to trap lectins. We talked about lectins a couple weeks ago, and viruses exert much of their negative effects via their they're sticky lectins, which allows them to adhere and stick to parts of the body. The Z radical can wash away viruses, uh, slime away viruses, if you will, and that can be helpful too uh, for building the immune system. Does that help you, Julia? Great. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to see if we can get Patrice real quick. Uh, if we can't finish up, Patrice, uh, we'll get you on our next Brightside episode. Did you have a quick question for us, ma'am? Patrice, I do. South Carolina? I do. Thank you for taking my call. We have a granddaughter that was just recently diagnosed with uh, Raynaud's disease. She fainted okay. last Friday. I'm out. Okay. Okay, Raynaud's is a circulatory issue. Correct. It has to do with how blood is moving through the body. Blood is not moving as it should. Whenever you have a circulatory problem, you're dealing with something blocking the flow of blood. When something blocks the flow of blood, the, the first thing you want to check on is inflammation that is entering into the body through a compromised immune system, somehow activating the stress response, which clots the blood and keeps blood from moving as it should. So for Raynaud's syndrome, first and foremost, look for digestive assault, correct any digestive issues, Secondly, use the B-complex, especially niacin, which is wonderfully vasodilating, opens up the blood vessels rapidly. In fact, just niacin alone may improve rain outs. And then electrolyte minerals, uh, potassium, calcium, sodium, magnesium, uh, these electrolytes can also help. Use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, get on about uh, 100 to 200 milligrams of timed release niacin, and then I stay on the Healthy Star Pack. Of course, that's always a good idea. Thanks for your call, Patrice. And please call back up uh, on Monday on our next Great Side episode, and we'll finish up if you have any more questions. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Stay tuned for Alex Jones next on most of these stations. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.